Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Buck Stops Here. I'm Katherine Murray. Well, I think, as you know, my program is focused on bringing you context around the content that impacts your business, the markets, and your money. Uh, in other words, really trying to make sense of the various factors affecting our lives and our opportunities. I think, as many of you also know, I spent 14 years on Wall Street at Goldman Sachs, as well as uh, Deutsche Bank before having an 11 year career on business television. Um, so before we get to our main conversation today, I thought it might be good to give you a little bit of a market recap, given the dramatic sell off we've been seeing in the markets, uh, which are down by about 20% over the past number of weeks. Uh, we did actually see the Dow drop 1100 points this week in one day, actually, um, driven by inflation fears. And, you know, we know inflation's out there. We know that it's at a multi-decade high, over 8% in the United States. But what really spooked investors this week and maybe what turned the tables a little bit is that we are actually now seeing inflation affect companies. You're seeing that in the earnings, Walmart and Target this week. That was the key driver to the downside. Target shares were actually down by 24% following their first quarter earnings results. And they reported earnings that missed expectations as well as margins well below expectations. And the company actually warned of a bigger margin hit this year uh, due to rising fuel and freight costs. We also saw a big hit to Walmart after cutting its annual profit, again, due to these rising costs. Walmart, in fact, had its worst daily stock performance since 1987. And these are two big retailers, obviously. Uh, their stocks don't move um, to the degree we saw them move this week. So it really was a bit of a spook. Um, we have seen trillions of dollars wiped out of the global markets in recent weeks, as I mentioned. Investors are selling their high valuation stocks. Remember, as rates rise, that does put downward pressure on valuations, and tech valuations are among the highest. In fact, the Wall Street Journal has an article out saying a handful of these stocks are responsible for 46% of the S&P 500 2022 losses through Wednesday of this week. Again, investors are seeing and selling in anticipation of the U.S. Federal Reserve having to be perhaps more aggressive in raising rates to combat inflation. I would, however, suggest a very utter consensus call to think about um, that we are actually seeing a slowdown in U.S. economic data quite dramatically. In other words, the economy might, in fact, be operating at a slower rate and slower pace, which is less inflationary and might, in fact, mean that the U.S. Federal Reserve doesn't have to be as aggressive at raising rates. Now, of course, we have two exogenous factors in, uh, impacting inflation, that, of course, being the war in Ukraine affecting food supply and also, of course, oil supply. Those two factors are not going away. So maybe we will have to see the U.S. Federal Reserve continue to raise rates. Today, we look to be getting a bit of a bounce in the market. It's Friday, I always pre-tape. Um, and that is because uh, China had a surprise cut, rate cut, in order to boost their economy. Um, this is another important dynamic because when you have two of the largest economies in the world, the United States as well as China, uh, with opposing central bank policies, the U.S. raising rates to combat inflation, China lowering rates to spur growth, um, that puts upward pressure on the U.S. dollar. It's very painful for emerging markets. The big question is, can the U.S. Fed continue to do that, put upward pressure on the U.S. dollar? Um, because in, in addition to focusing on inflation, they also want to maintain financial stability. And when you have a rising U.S. dollar putting so much pressure on emerging markets, that could create financial instability. So just something to think about. We'll watch how the markets react today for sure. Um, and you can always watch my market recap on the news forum every Thursday. Let me bring in our first guest. We only have a, a little bit in this segment, but Barry Fenton is the president and CEO of Lantera, uh, focused on real estate here in Canada. Barry, great to have you with us. Um, just quickly before we you know, do take a quick break. Um, what are your thoughts right now in terms of the rise in rate and inflation environment? Well, inflation isn't a good word for me, but um, what, what ends up happening with inflation issue, issues is that we end up having to, um, to pass out those, those uh, inflationary uh, rates over to consumers. So that does become a problem. The other issue for us is when you have trades locked in to build uh, high-rise condominium projects and inflation hits, uh, some of the trades may try to come back and uh, crawl back and uh, or, or come back to us and ask for increases 
in uh, contract amounts. But overall, we've been able to deal with it. And uh, my own feeling on inflation is that um, I think it's going to be uh, shorter lived than people are talking about. And I think uh, we'll look back and say that it was, wasn't a great period of time for inflation, but we'll fix it. Uh, we are back with Barry Fenn. And, and Barry, you know, I was so serious at the beginning in terms of just kind of getting the market views out because it has really, I think, shaken people, particularly this week. So I forgot to say uh, welcome. And to our viewers, we have been talking, you and I, for so many years now, and you're one of my most favorite people to interview. So thank you for being here. Thank you. My pleasure, and always thank you for uh, for having me. And you're uh, you know you're one talented host, so I appreciate the opportunity. So thank you. Thank you. Um, so let, let's get back to a little bit of the business here at hand. And and you know we were talking about um, inflation and how that impacts you and the interest rate environment. Maybe just give us a little bit more granularity. I mean, because we're seeing this, everybody's feeling this. You know, that someone feels the price and pressure, so they're raising ra they're raising their prices. Trades people are going to raise their prices. I mean, this is, it feels like it's never ending. Well, at the end of the day, you know, the for you know, I do. Uh, I'm involved in a uh, company that builds substantial uh, infrastructure of high rise and mid rise and low rise condominium projects throughout Canada, and we're also doing a lot of activity in New York. So uh, it's housing. So when you have inflationary issues, what gets affected is the interest rate component of uh, when, when uh, purchasers are going out to, to, put, to lock in mortgage financing when they close their transaction, and also the costing of the, the commodities themselves. So it, is, it, you know, it can affect and will affect, but at the end of the day, it, it gets past, most of that, those costs will get passed over to the, to, the, uh, to the purchasers. I mean, we, from a profitability standpoint, you know, we've locked in uh, the the ability to to sell inventory two, three, four years ago on some projects, and now we're we have a commitment which we follow through on to um, to deliver the product. So our profitability is may be affected by that. There's no question about it. There's, you know, we're we're very transparent about it. But at the end of the day, I think inflation is um, is, is going to be uh, curtailed, and uh, you know, and I and I see that interest rates, I believe, will be will be coming down as well. Hmm. Um, what, what kind of um, upward pricing pressure are you seeing? And I think people are really trying to understand, like, why and how is this happening? I mean, we know, we, we know COVID, we know that that's impacted supply chains. Now we've got the war in Ukraine. But what are you seeing? Why is this happening? Where are the stress points, Barry? Just so we really kind of understand it. Well, you know, I, I don't want to say that inflation is fixed, but I have this funny feeling that a lot of what's going on now are people taking advantage, and, and I don't want to be disrespectful about it. But uh, I think that uh, inflation is the is the talk of the month, the flavor of the month, and uh, I think you know between wars and and reasons to increase interest rates and uh, you know softening in some of the markets. And the truth of it is a lot of people have uh, extra money lying around just because of the fact that they weren't spending it over COVID. So I think now you know, you're know you seeing people have access to a lot of extra cash and they're not quite sure what to do with it. So that's one of the reasons why we have an inflation problem. But I think overall, um, you know, um, I, I, again, as I said before, I think you know the inflation will will uh, will soften, and uh, I think will continue to go on. But from a real estate standpoint, I think that uh, you know the markets are substantially in good shape. And so, why do you see that and say that? And I think everybody, you know, most most people's main asset is actually in real estate. Um, why why are you so confident about the real estate market? And we're we're in Canada. But obviously, all of our markets are so interconnected, from particularly from a rate perspective. But real estate in Canada, particularly Toronto, Ontario, and surrounding regions, why are you so confident? I think that uh, first of all, I think that money has never been as easy to obtain. And uh, you know, when you look at how people finance projects, most people go out and they get their, you know, they go to the CIBCs and the Scotia banks, and they're able to obtain first time or second time financing against the property. So that's that's number one. And number two, I just think that the market in general uh, has a lot of ability to, uh, uh, to to go out and, and add strength. So, how much of a factor, though, when we think about what's even going on from an economic perspective or wage wage inflation? 
Um, many people will point to the fact that we haven't had immigration for two and a half years. How do you see, see that impacting uh, real estate? Oh, well, I think, you know, you're, you're absolutely correct. And in fact, you know, we have rental buildings downtown Toronto where, uh, you know, we couldn't rent a unit for nine months because they were uh, student occupied. But what we've seen in the last three months is a, a fury of of uh, backtracking and the people coming back to to, uh, to Toronto and to Canada on the immigration standpoint. So again, everything kind of came to a halt between COVID and uh, inflation and a lot of other things. But it's gonna it's turning around very very quickly. Mm, okay, uh, we'll take a quick break. A lot to catch up on when we return. We'll be right back. Thank you. Barry, it's interesting to see and, and really hear from your viewpoint that um, we are seeing people come back to Canada from an immigration perspective. Um, how that That's great and, and fascinating to hear because that does put an upward momentum in terms of economic growth, I would think. What, what exactly are you seeing? Well, you know, there's no question that uh, we were projecting something like 100,000 people moving uh, into Canada from uh, outside of Canada. Uh, we're projecting this year, we're gonna have something like 300,000 people coming back in. So it's it, we, for the last two years, because of COVID, we just had a, a miss on the on the numbers. But we, we just think that's gonna add fuel to the fire. I think it's gonna put a lot of pressure, to be quite frank, on the rental markets, which will actually uh, help uh, the investment of real estate if someone is buying it as an investment. So, and I've seen that in, a lot, in the last uh, four to five months, I've seen the rental rates go from approximately three, three and a half dollars a square foot downtown Toronto to something like five dollars a foot. So, a so there's no question that immigration helps. Canada also as a country is the second safest country in the world. It's, it's looked at as, as the top three countries in the, in, in, in the world. The currency, which I can never figure out, is you know Canadian dollar to the U.S. is trading at roughly a dollar thirty. I think it, I think it's way, way, way uh, uh, undervalued compared to where it should be. Um, so um, I just think it's a good story. And immigration, there's no question, helps uh, create uh, more wealth for uh, owners of uh, of real estate assets in Canada, and it, it also provides. Uh, vibrancy and economic stability for Canada as a whole, not, not, yeah. um, not just the real estate. And, and, and our viewers should understand that you invest in Canada and the United States. You can do it wherever you want. Um, from a real estate investment perspective in, in Canada, what, what, speci what specifically interests you right now? Well, I, um, you know, we, we, uh, we continue to, uh, to, uh, to invest in, uh, condominium uh, high-rise projects and mid-rise. Uh, we are all, we also have gone out and uh, looked very closely at the office market. We think mm. that uh, that market uh, had some hurt in the last uh, 12 to 24 months. So we're actually uh, really eyeing some really cool assets in Canada on an acquisition basis. And um, in New York, we have a very, very large, substantial rental uh, project that we actually commenced and then we, we put it on the back burners because of what was going on with the COVID situation. And it's actually interesting that now that you know, we're back and we're going to commence construction shortly on, you know, about a six, 700,000 square foot site in New Jer Jersey by Journal Square. And uh, the rental market has, has gone up 30% from when we were going to start to where we are now. Now, granted, it's going to take four years to build a project, but it just like COVID was a bad thing. But on the other hand, it's actually helped the stability of the project on the other side. So um, hopefully I've, I've answered your, yeah. your question. With respect. <laughs> well, you did. Um, so a couple questions. You're looking at offices in Toronto. We're, well, we're looking at that's one, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at a class of, of, of real estate that got really beaten down and people yeah. are trying to not understand how to deal with it. I mean, we continue to also uh, uh, stay tuned to our own uh, asset class, which is uh, 
yeah. uh, con which is condominium high-rise living in downtown Toronto, and there's just so much more demand for it now than there was before. So we're not going to, you know, we're, we're going to stay tuned to where we are. But um, the other market that I just talked about has a lot of potential, I believe, the office component. And we, in fact, have acquired a, a few buildings over the last few years and the last, uh, you know, months uh, to, uh, to, to add to our portfolio. So we're going to go back to work in an office? I love it. <laughs> I think we're going to go back to work. Uh, I'm not sure I'd want to be an owner of a, of a restaurant in the food court, but uh, I think the, the rental rates are going to go up. And I think that uh, there, there is going to be a demand for people to come back. And I think that when people come back, you know, they'll want to have more space per person as opposed to less. So there's going to be a demand for more space usage. And in fact, we have a very large um, portfolio in downtown Toronto that we, and we just renegotiated a 400,000 square foot uh, lease, uh, which wasn't technically supposed to be uh, negotiated for another three years. And it was a, you know, a substantial uh, commitment by a very, very large company uh, mm -hmm. for the next 20 years. So it, it, that was actually very interesting to me. It was, that, that was a good sign. Yeah, it's a great sign. Um, also interesting to see that, you know, people want to return to the cities. That's a change. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Barry, you know, you and I have been talking for so many years now, and every year the real estate market goes higher and higher. And I think I was always asking you, can it really continue to go higher? So where do you think now, at the point we're at, where do you see real estate the next three to four years out as an asset class? I think it's going to continue to shine. Um, I, I think that value, I, I think that if you buy something today and you buy it in the right location uh, and you buy it properly, I think you can see 30, 40% appreciations. I mean, I think that, you know, when you look at, um, 12 years ago, if you were buying an asset, you were spending a uh, million dollars. Today, it's probably worth two and a half. So yeah, I think that, that the real estate game is here for the long haul. Um, it, it's for sure something a little more safe, in, in my opinion, than you know buying the stock market uh, index at uh, you know, way high and then it recorrects 20% or 30%. You don't see that in real estate. You, you actually don't. You know, the, the only thing that people, you may see is a three to 5% correction, but in Canada, we haven't seen that. In uh, New York, we saw that for uh, maybe six months where uh, you saw a 20% decrease in condominium uh, product. And then now it's, not only did it catch up on the 20%, it's back up another 20%. So, and Miami's another perfect example. I mean, that, that whole market is on fire. So, um, I mean, real estate, everybody should have that in their, in their, in their basket of uh, stability and how to create wealth. No, there's no question that people you know, are entitled to do uh, other investments, but the real estate market, I believe, has so much more substantial, so much more substantial in, the long, in the long run and will continue to do well. And I think that the rental market will help. I think interest rates are gonna come back down, which will fuel it again. I just think there's a lack of supply and there's just so much demand. And in our business, which is you know the condominium side, we've really taught the industry over the last 20 years that it's a, a class that people can live in and deal with. So it's, uh, I think we're in really, really good shape. I'm not ready to retire yet, but I think we're almost there. Uh, and, and Barry, when you say, you know, buy it in the right areas, what, what do you think is uh, an interesting area these days? Well, I like the, uh, you know, it's interesting. We just uh, were very successful in a million square foot launch in um, for the viewers in the west end of the city uh, where there's going to be new transportation created thanks to uh, the Ford government. And, um, you know, you're, you're able to buy product there probably for two thirds of what you would pay for in downtown Toronto. And I think that over the next five years, that valuation will be similar to where downtown Toronto is now. So I think it's, it is, there's no question it's more affordable. Um, it's interesting too, because people aren't buying larger units because it's, it's more affordable. People are all happy to buy the same type of square footage. But, uh, so that's one marketplace. Um, another marketplace where we're very heavily uh, loaded up in the, with Cadillac Fairview in, uh, in areas uh, by the shops of Don Mills. 
But generally speaking, I think that the downtown marketplace still has so much uh, upside as well. There's just so much good infrastructure downtown Toronto. And, you know, I think you mentioned about four years ago, we were seeing some of these um, sales at $1,200 per square foot, which seemed unbelievable at the time. Um, what are you seeing now? Well, we've just come out with some new launches downtown in the uh, theater district area, entertainment area, and we're, you know, we're launching at seventeen, eighteen hundred dollars $1,800 a square foot. So, um, but the truth of it is you need to do that from our standpoint because costs have gone up land prices in order to acquire the assets have gone up and we need to make sure that we carry enough contingencies in the project to deal with as we as we're seeing now in inflationary pressures on commodity prices and you know for example in toronto now they just completed another strike the uh, the union just had a substantial strike and shut down all of the projects throughout toronto and now at least they were able to settle but the average labor is now going to get an increase of 10 or $12 a, uh, an hour over the next three years. So everything adds up. So the, mm -hmm. the formulation has to be from an investor standpoint or purchaser standpoint, you need to buy it right. You need to be prepared to sit with it, but you'll do really, really well. Um, real quick, are the banks still willing lenders? Banks are, have been incredible. You know, we have strong, strong relationships. We have billions of dollars out with the banks right now, but they're very supportive. They understand the game. They, they The banks have in their pie-shaped classifications, real estate is probably their number one in, uh, in asset that they want to continue to hold. And uh, okay. thanks to the banks, the top five banks, they've been tremendous to, to us at Lanterra and we appreciate it. Okay, Barry, we got to leave it there. Great to see you. Thank you. Thank you for having me.